going to come back again. And we look forward to that day. But until then, Father, give us the opportunity and the boldness to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. So at this time, our children are dismissed to go to their children's time. They're going to get a great message of God's word. Plus, they're going to have snacks and something to drink and play games. And we get to sit here in our nice air-conditioned building. Amen? And hear God's word. I want to thank you guys for uh, the prayers and the questioning of uh, how was our time. Christine and I got away. We left Sunday after church uh, last week, and we got to go see uh, Stephen and Kayla and the kids and Kayla's mom. Kayla's mom, if you guys don't know, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and you wouldn't even think about it. You wouldn't even know it. Her attitude is so strong. Her faith is so strong. So it's, it was a great blessing to be able to go up there to Corning, California. Never thought I'd go up there. I didn't even know what that was. And so one of the things I asked the kids is like, well, why would they call it Corning, California, which sounds like it would be full of corn, but it's a place where it's full of olive trees. So I told uh, the kids, I said, you got all of these trees. There was my joke. You got all of these trees and the place is named Corning. I thought, who thought of that name? More than likely it was named probably out of somebody who settled there, but it just kind of doesn't make sense when you have a name and you see something there and it doesn't reflect the name. And it's kind of interesting because that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the name of God and how we should not disrespect his name. We're continuing our series of 10. We're going to look at 10 God's unwavering commands, the 10 commandments. And I don't think I've been here 13 years and I don't know if I've ever heard Maybe I have maybe once, the 21 years that I've been here, maybe once that the Ten Commandments were preached on and taught. And so I felt by God's Spirit to teach on these things. It's part of our discipleship theme for this whole year. Now some of you are probably thinking, well, I've been a Christian for 30, 50, 60 years, 100 years. If you've been a Christian for 100 years, God bless you. But I've heard these already. I've studied it. I've did Bible study after Bible study. I know it all. And that's great that you know about it. But again, it's my job to remind you that we need to always live up to his commands. It's kind of like God's constitution to his people. This is who I am and this is how I want you to live. And I want you to live this way because I'm going to show my glory and bless you as a people so that the rest of the world can know that I am the one true God and I exist. You will be a testimony. You will be a witness. And Jesus did the same thing when it came to his disciples and when it comes to the church. You will be my witnesses. You will talk about, you will uh, declare, you will testify of who I am and what I've done and what I'm going to do. And so God has these unwavering commands. He's not going to budge when we come face to face to his commands. And today we're going to look at God's name. Now, the main idea of this message, and I have there up on the screen, is God's name deserves the utmost respect and honor. Church, did you hear me on that? God's name deserves the utmost respect and honor. Isn't it interesting that God had to give this third command? Because he knew that there would be people that would disrespect and dishonor his name, misrepresent who he is. And so what did God say to his people? What did God give to Moses as the law? to give to his people who are about to go to the promised land. He says this in verse 7. I have it up there on the screen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7 says this. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. God is not playing around when it comes to his name. I don't know about you, but how many of you have a difficult name or a last name and they just totally botch that name? And then when you try to correct them, they still botch it. And then they probably say, well, it's too hard anyway, so I just take it for what it is. It's kind of disrespectful. And it's kind of the same thing with God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. But not only the word misuse, I'm going to talk a little bit of what, that, what he's saying there. But for me, my real name is Gerardo. And I'll try to say that five times real fast. 
And many of you will probably botch it because you don't, can't say that, that H, the G is an H in Spanish and you can't roll your R's, Gerardo. So there are a lot of people call me Geraldo. My name is not Geraldo. I'm not on Fox News and my mustache isn't that big. And it reminds me of my lunch lady back when I was in elementary. She just could not say my name, Geraldo, Gerald, Ger Geraldo. She just could not say it. And I give her credit because she tried. And she says, you know what? I'm just going to call you Jerry. And that's why my name is Jerry here. It stuck with me that long. And it doesn't, she wasn't disrespecting me or anything like that. But it's definitely you don't want somebody misusing who you are, misusing, mischaracterizing your name. Your name is your, who you are. It's your identity. It's who, who makes, it's what makes you. There's a lot of meaning when it comes to names. When you were born, your parents were looking for a name that had a meaning of who you, were, who you are or who you're going to be. And God's name has meaning. And he says here, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember in, in Exodus, and I'm going to go on my Bible here because I want to read it again. I don't have Brittany's um, bookmark on me. She's going to have to make me another one. Where's Brittany? She's not here today. She's not here today. Oh, she's not feeling well. All right. I want to read starting with verse 1. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, verse 2, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. That's so important for us to understand. I am the Lord your God. I am your God. I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. I am Yahweh who brought you out of Egypt. I didn't have to bring you out. I didn't have to bring you out of that land of slavery. I didn't have to free you from your sins. I didn't have to come down as Jesus. I didn't have to come down and save you from hell. But I am your God and I love you. It's who I am. It's in my character. And he says in verse 3, you shall have no other gods before me. Jesus freed us. I want us to always remember that. And the one who freed us, the one who took us out of that dark world, how dare we misuse his name? In verse 4, he says, You shall not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything in heaven on earth above or on the earth beneath the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing, here it is, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me, here it is, and keep my commands. Church, today, can you truly say, I love God? And because I love God, I want to keep his commands. I want to strive to keep his commands. And then in verse 7, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. So what is misusing God's name? I'm glad you asked, because I have it there. If you have your little fill-in-the-blanks in your bulletin, I have some fill-in-the-blanks there you can remember. Misusing God's name is this. Misusing God's name presents him as meaningless. Ooh, that's a strong word. Pretty much what you're saying, God, you have no meaning in my life. And so I'm going to misuse your name. Now, many times right now, you're probably thinking, well, a lot of people use God's name as a curse word. How can, since when did God's name become a curse word? When people use misgod, misuse God's name, it's, they make it in him meaningless. And God is not meaningless. He is not empty. We are not to use God's name for selfish gain. I think about pastors nowadays. I think about myself. When I'm preaching God's word, how I cannot misuse God's name. I cannot misuse his word. I will be held more accountable. I need to preach the word. I need to preach who he is and not try to preach him for my own selfish gain. Not for prosperity, not for money, not for anything else like that. Not to make me look good. God's name is holy. It's righteous. He's just. He's creator. Isn't it interesting that the creator is telling the creation, don't misuse the name of the creator. I spoke everything into existence and I give you an opportunity to be able to speak and you're going to misuse and misspeak my name. Misusing God's name 
presents him as meaningless. It means nothing. Now, this is why a lot of people, they say God's name in a meaningless way. They misuse his name. And I don't want to say they don't know that they're misusing God's name. But if they do know, they don't care. I was one of those guys. I used to misuse God's name before I became, came to Christ. And it's interesting to me that I still see Christian folks misuse God's name. Using it for their own selfish gain or using it for, for uh, just a let, some sort of aggression out or whatever the case may be. God's name is for Him. It's for His glory. And it has full of meaning. We can take a whole study, a long study. As a matter of fact, we may spend the whole year next year, 52 weeks studying God's name. I'm thinking about it. There's so much meaning in God's name. He is the Redeemer. He restores. And we can't misuse His name. Misusing God's name, number two, is this. It misrepresents His reputation. Not only does it present Him as meaningless, but it mis misrepresents His reputation. When we say, use God's name in a meaningless way, and I'm so tempted to, to say something, and I'm I'm holding myself back of saying something that will be very offensive. Because you guys, I don't need to give you an example. You guys, you hear it every day. You watch a movie. It's there. And we can't misuse a, a, a name of a, of a man, of a God, a spirit, a creator who rescued us. He rescued you. He redeemed you, He restored you, He renewed you, and He's going to resurrect you. How can we misuse His name? But God had to tell the people of Israel, He had to tell His people who He was establishing, don't do it because it misrepresents who I am to other people. And so church, I know you know this already, but I'm here to remind you, when you walk out of these doors and you go outside, and somebody cuts you off in the grocery line. Don't misuse his name. Don't even bring him up. Don't even bring him into it. We need to be people of obedience and remind ourselves each and every day not to misuse his name. I am the Lord, your God. I am your God. Can you imagine disrespecting? No, I can't imagine this. My mom's 75 years old, 76 years old. And she's frail. But I will never, ever think about disrespecting my mother. I don't care how frail she is. I don't care how weak she is. She will knock me out until the middle of next week. <laughs> I remember one time I was in my mom's house and I was talking to my brother on the phone. And back then, my brother wasn't doing very well, and I was angry at him, and I, was, I ended up hanging up the, word, the, the, the phone. Back in those days, notice I'm so old school, the phone was in the kitchen wall right there on the cabinet, and I hung it up. Nowadays, you just hit the button nowadays. But I hung it up. I'm so old. And, and I hung it up, and I said a curse word. Now, I thought my mom was in the shower, but she was already out. And I turned around, and I saw her, and all I saw was a right hand just knock me out. I thought it was Mike Tyson. I was able to see my lips and my tongue and the spit come out like a, like a slow motion. And I turned around, I was like, oh, and she said, don't you ever use words like that in my house. Church, and I'll say the same thing. Imagine God say, don't you ever use words like that in my house. You may be thinking, I'm not just saying here at church, because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in us. And if we use, misuse his name in his house, we're misusing his name in our bodies. God gave us a tongue to speak and proclaim his glory. And how dare we misuse the name of God? Number three, misusing God's name promises punishment. Now, I, I wanted to glance over this, but the Lord just kept keep bringing me to it. I can't, I can't ignore it. Listen to what it says. 
You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Church, it's right there. Don't get mad at me. It's right there. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. For the Lord, notice in this translation of mine, it has all capital letters, L-O-R-D, or all capital. It's his name, for his name, for he who is your Lord. Yahweh will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. His punishment is promised. Church, if we read our scripture, there's punishment when it comes to disobedience. A lot of many people think, oh, God's not going to punish me because he's a God of love. And he's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. Yes, he is. But he's also a God of wrath. He's a God of punishment. And you misuse his name. It says right there, you misuse my name. I won't hold anyone guiltless. You will be declared guilty. Disobedience leads to punishment, church. Be aware of that. Be aware of that. But obedience leads to blessing. It's throughout the, whole, the Old Testament. You are obedient to me. I will bless you. I will give you more than you can handle if you're obedient to me. Isn't it interesting that people who don't believe in God, or they do, but they just really don't care, they misuse God's name or they're disobedient without any type of fear of what's to come. And then when they come to Christ and they give their life to Christ, then all of a sudden the fear comes in when God is calling you to do something. Oh, church, I know I'm speaking to somebody. Why is it that when we're non-believers, we have no fear in the world, we do whatever we want without thinking, uh, thinking twice about it, and then all of a sudden we come to Christ and God is calling us to do something, and all of a sudden the fear comes in. Church, disobedience leads to punishment, whether you're a Christian or not. Oh, did I speak to somebody? Just because you came to a church and you prayed a prayer for two seconds and told the pastor about it, you got dunked in the water, doesn't mean there isn't going to be punishment. We're all going to be judged, believers and non-believers. And so we must always <laughs> work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should always examine our hearts, is what Paul says in the New Testament. Paul says we should always examine ourselves. Are we being obedient Obedience leads to blessing. We're people that represent God, church, to the world. How would it look like if we tarnish his name? How would it look like if people misuse the name of Jesus, the most powerful name? It transformed the world. It changed time. And it changes all of us. How would the world be? You think the world's bad now? You think things are really bad now? Watch how they're going to be in the future. There will be people that are tarnishing the name of Jesus. And churches, churches will even, Christian folks, so-called Christian folks that will tarnish the name of Jesus. The scripture says they'll even reject the name of Jesus. Church, if we misuse God's name, there is a promise of God's punishment. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I don't want to leave on a bad note. There's always a solution. The Bible shows a problem here. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God or else you will be held guilty if you misuse His name. But point number four is this. Not misusing, not misusing God's name. In other words, you respect his name. You think about who he is. When you don't misuse God's name, it's a reflection of your righteousness in Christ. When you don't misuse God's name, when you declare it, when you proclaim it, when you praise it, when you share it, when you witness to it, it's a reflection of your righteousness in Christ. Is there a change in your life? You see, there was a day where I didn't use, I misused God's name. And now that I'm in Christ, I don't want to misuse God's name. I want to be a reflection of the righteousness that I have, the salvation that I have, that Jesus suffered and died on a cross for my sins. I'm redeemed, I'm restored, I'm renewed, I'm resurrected. 
I was dead, church. I was dead. And I'm looking out here. Many of you were dead in your sin. Dead in your sin. And now you're renewed. And now you have this reflection of your righteousness in Christ. Scripture says that the Bible is like a mirror. And a mirror has a reflection. This morning when I woke up, I do this every morning. I wake up and I look in the mirror and I go, wow, I look that good. Praise God. No, I don't do that. Christina tells me that. She tells me that on paydays for some reason. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I tell her that every day. But here's the thing. The Bible says that it's like a mirror and it's a reflection of who God is and who we are. And church, if you're looking at yourself and you see that, man, I'm misusing God's name. And because I'm misusing God's name, now I'm seeing myself as a guilty person in the eyes of God. But when you look at the New Testament, you see Jesus teaching his people about righteousness, teaching people how to live right before God. He, in, this is the Beatitudes in chapter 5. The first thing he says, repent. In other words, turn from your sins. Turn from your sin and yourself. S repent. Why, why would some homeless guy that they'd never seen before, they probably heard about him when he was born, nobody from Nazareth, a nobody, comes and tells a bunch of people, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, who are you? And he goes on teaching about righteousness and how to live right before God. And he talks about an oath, and I want to reread it. He says, again, you've heard it, that it was said to the people long ago, don't break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne. Notice he's putting it together. It's God's throne. Or by the earth, for it is his footstool. Or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. That gives me relief. Because I didn't put this gray hair in my head. It was my kids. No. God's the one that does it. God's in charge of everything. And here's what Jesus is saying. Don't say you're going to do something by God's name. Don't misuse his name. I swear to God I'm going to do this. <gasps> I've heard many people say that. Because what happens if you don't? You mischaracterize, you misrepresent. Well, where's your God now? All you need to simply say is yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Christian, listen. Do not swear falsely by my name, by Jesus' name, by God's name. And so profane the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord. That's out of Leviticus chapter 6, chapter 19, verse 12. Do not swear falsely by my name. And so profane the name of your God. Don't misrepresent me. Don't make my name meaningless. I have a reputation that I have upkept. My integrity is at stake. And the last thing that we want to do mm, is misrepresent who God is. He's holy. He's just. He created the whole world into existence. He saved you. He redeemed you. He renewed you. He restored you. He rescued you. And he's going to resurrect you. Remember that, church. So the next time you're tempted, when you get cut off, when something doesn't happen that goes your way, and you want to say... Hold yourself. Tame the tongue is what James says. Tame that tongue. Reel it in. And rather than use, misusing his name or using it as a curse word or any other way that degrades God, profanes his name, just stop yourself and say, thank you, Jesus. Make that a habit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that that person cut me off because I probably would have kept going and been sideswiped by somebody else. Who knows? Thank you, Jesus. When was the last time you really thanked God, thanked Him, and reflected the righteousness that He gave you in Christ Jesus? Church, 
It's simple. But it's one of the most difficult things that this world does. As a matter of fact, I don't want to even say it's the most difficult thing. It's, it's one of the easiest things that this world does. And it drives me nuts. Sometimes we have a movie on and all I hear is curse word after curse word after curse word. And I'll tell Christina, Christina, turn it off. It's just too much. Especially, especially when they put God's name in those, in those words. Put God's name after an adjective. It's not right. It's evil and it's ugly. And I hope and pray that nobody in this church, I can't talk about Lancaster Baptist, Grace Chapel, Central Christian, Valley Bible. I can't talk about those other churches. All I can hold myself accountable to and teach you is let's not be a church that's going to misuse God's name. Let's tame the tongue. Can we do that today? Can you make that? Well, don't say swear to God. But today, can you say, God, I'm going to work on my tongue. I'm going to surrender my tongue to you. I'm going to surrender the words that I said come out of my mouth to reflect the righteousness that I that you have given me in Christ Jesus. You didn't come here on earth, suffer and teach and die on a cross so that we can use your name after a curse word. Oh, church, that's just so I can't even think about that, how ugly that is. And so today we can make that commitment to God to surrender our tongue, surrender our mouths, surrender our lips. The scripture even says, and I'm trying to remember where it's at, but how can we praise God one day with our lips and with the same lips? Ooh, curse and say profanities and say things that are evil. Church, I'm I'm God's speaking to me today, and I hope he's speaking to you. Let's tame our tongues. Let's watch our mouths. James has a whole chapter, chapter 3, about the tongue and how strong it is and how powerful it is. And if we're going to have that much power, words are powerful, church. If we're going to have that much power, let's use it to proclaim and share the love of Christ to our communities and our world around us. Amen? I'm done. Let's go have some barbecue. Who's barbecuing today? It's raining outside. Oh, there we go. We got a hand in the back. We're all going to Tom and Joanne's house out there in Lake L.A. Put gas in the car. We're going to caravan. Let's stand this morning if we have our time of invitation. Let's keep those that are not here in prayer. Many of our people are on vacation. Nancy Sedil is not feeling well, so keep her in prayer. And um, I'm going to ask you guys, some of you guys are asking, how's Kayla and Stephen? Uh, I'm going to ask you guys to keep them in prayer. They're looking for a church home, a Bible teaching church home and that's hard to do when you've been in a church for so long you're discipled you're raised here and this is where you gave your life to Christ it's hard to go somewhere else and so keep them in prayer keep the family in prayer and uh, they're doing great gosh they're doing so good and um, just thank God for this church that was able to reach them for, for Jesus and I hope and pray again that they will go do the same for somebody else up there up north so Today I have a prayer up on the screen. It's, it's, it's just you talking to God. Maybe you need to renew your commitment to Christ. And you just pray, God, I know I'm a sinner. There's that admission. God, I know I'm a sinner. I rebelled against you. And I repent of those sins. And I ask today for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus suffered, died, and was buried for my sins. And you raised him from the dead. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And today, Lord, I want to give you my life. I want to give you my life. There it is. I'm giving you my tongue. I'm giving you my lips. I'm giving you everything I have. I'm giving you my life. Will you make that commitment to God and receive Jesus? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God that Jesus died and God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But again, I always say, there has to be transformation. There has to be change. There has to be fruit of your salvation. Fruits of the Spirit have to start coming into your life. That's the gospel. The gospel is not just saying a prayer here at church and then living your life the way you want to. What good is that? 
Just giving Jesus your life and living up to that commitment you just made. Listen, church, God has lived up to his commitment when you can live up to yours. And so today we invite you. I'm going to ask uh, Jeff to come up and, and I'll stand over here. And I know there's a new uh, mandate from L.A. County where we have to wear masks, so we're not wearing any right now, but I'll wear mine. Uh, so if you come up, I'm going to ask you to wear yours just to be safe just to be safe, and uh, we don't want anybody getting sick. I don't know how good the mask is, but it doesn't hurt. So let's just uh, be safe for everybody's sake, and uh, let's let God work. Amen? Let's sing our last song. by his name and just give him all the glory, all the praise. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for giving us new life, giving us each other, giving us your spirit, giving us your word. Father, always keeping us in the straight and narrow, removing us from the dark paths that we may want to go on. Father, bringing us to your righteous path. Father, help us to always follow it. No matter how res resistant we are, Father, always reel us in into your presence so that we'll always be in awe and bow down to our knees, get down on our knees and just thank you. Father, glorify yourself in and through your church and give us opportunity again, Father, to go out in our communities, in our schools, in our places of work, in the gym, wherever it is that we go, Father, to proclaim the wonderful name of Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. And everyone shout it out. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week.
face. Look, you stop.